Welcome to Gulf Stream today. Ron Nicoletti, Katie Stazak, a beautiful day in South Florida. Had some rain uh, overnight. We got a good main track, good surf course. And uh, Katie wasn't here on Thursday, but uh, boy, did we have an exciting day with someone bringing down the super high five, four out of five, paying $205,000. We had to pay out everything, but you know what? We're starting with a $50,000 jackpot guarantee in the Rainbow Six again. Races six through 11 today. What a weekend it was. A week, I should say. We day it was. It really was, and it really <laughs> showcases how great these bets are because of those payoffs. It was a started out as a hundred fifty thousand dollar guaranteed pot in that Rainbow Six mandatory payout. It reached, I believe, five hundred thousand dollars. Six hundred. Six hundred thousand dollars. So a fantastic bet. A lot of people went home with uh, some very full pockets. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? The beauty of it, it starts all over again. It did start all over again yesterday, and uh, almost hit it again yesterday. So now is your chance once again. As I mentioned, race is six. To 11. And last Saturday, we had the second leg of the Florida Cyrus Series, uh, Stake Series, and uh, we had a couple of really nice performances in there. We're going to go back and show you those two uh, wins. I'm going to start it off with the uh, race uh, with the affirmed division of the Florida Cyrus Stakes. Doesn't really get any better than these two races last week with how close these finishers were. You're going to see, guess who trains these two? Stanley Gold. If, really? uh, you might, might have heard that name before in the Cyrus Stakes, but here you're going to see Sink. Praises, who won the first leg of the Florida Sire Stakes. He's on the league, but here comes the other horse, and that is 225A, the nine. He actually gets up in the final stride to win this race by a neck. Very impressive. He just had one maiden win to his credit. He is now undefeated in two starts. And uh, we should see more of him in the final leg of the Sire Stakes. That's happening on October 4th. Well, that was an exciting race, but it was just exciting in Susan's Girl. Absolutely, even more so because you know what? After the horses crossed the finish in the Susan's Girl, I didn't know who the victor was. <laughs> so let's take a look at that video now. <laughs> You're going to see um, Holywell, the nine, is going to be the victor here. You won't know it until the very <laughs> end. She's going to hold on for a nose victory over a moment of delight, which is another very nice filly from the Bill Kaplan barn. Look at this. Five horses here coming down to the wire. And the nine, Holywell, she is just going to hold on. Holywell had a very, very tough trip in the first leg of the Sire Stakes. She got basically tread on at the start, never ran. So this was a much, much better effort that was more indicative of the quality that Holywell has. You know, and the final of these series will be on October 4th. We have the $350,000 My Dear Girl for the girls, and we have the open division, the $350,000 in reality. Yeah, the distance goes up, mile and a 16th, and the purse goes up. It should be very, very exciting. That's October 4th. Well, let's look at today's races, and we're going to start it off in the first race with a mile and a 16th claiming event. These are Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, and they're $6,250 is the tag. I went to the outside here, and I see that you did, too, with the number nine. Yeah, that's Kazacha. See how I made her say it instead of me? <laughs> that's Kazacha. I feel like that should be like an interjection of some kind. Kazachka. <laughs> this five-year-old mare really should rebound after fading to eighth in her last star in an allowance two weeks ago. She's dropping back to the the claiming ranks where she last won at this distance back on August 15th. That was in the slop that day. We've got a good main track today. She seems to be a bit of a wet track specialist on paper, but she has won on a fast track before, so this isn't necessarily uncharted territory for her. Well, early in the wagering, if you're looking at our board right now, up there is the eight horse at six to five, but there's still 50 minutes to the first race, so that can change. And Mamma Mia is stretching out to a mile in the 16th today uh, after setting the pace and finishing second. That was against $6,250 condition uh, claimers. They were going a mile in that race. So uh, stretching out to a mile in the 16th it was a pretty nice performance for that horse. It was. And these mile in a 16th races, it takes a special horse to win at this kind of distance. So we'll see. That's going to really play a big role, I think, in this race. And, you know, we both have Cabrini Light on our ticket. I thought this horse uh, might be the right horse in the opening race. Yeah, and she won at this rounding distance at Calder in April. So she's done it before, can do it. It again. Well, we're going to go to the turf for our second race of the afternoon, and this one is one mile and one sixteenth. These are claimed as fillies and mares, non winners of three races in life. The claiming level is $10,000. And once again, we have the same horse on top, and that is number seven, Gigi's Miracle. Did you look at my picture? No, today, I think Ronnie? you looked at mine. <laughs> <laughs> Gigi's Miracle, this five-year-old mare is coming off a win on August 31st 
at a mile after taking the slightest of drops in class from the 12-5 level. I really loved the move that she made in that race. She closed from 11 lengths off the pace and really kept pouring it on for a good half mile. Once she got to the leader, she just completely went right by and continued to kick clear. If she can sustain that type of pace for another 16th of a mile, she should not have a problem today. And written today uh, by Jesus Rios, who was in the saddle last time out, and he's been riding in great form. Uh, you know, uh, Ed Garzai is getting a lot of the uh, props around here, but certainly Jesus Rios riding very well. We have our second and third horses flip-flopping here. I went with the four, Ben De Silver in second, returning to the turf. Fifteen previous races on the turf. Two wins, a second and a third after proving he can compete with this uh, caliber competition when he rallied to finish second. It was a three-lifetime claimer. It was on a sealed, sloppy track. Looks like he fits the condition. Certainly knows how to run well on the turf. Yeah, and this mare ran second to Kazachka last out on August 15th. So if that mare runs well in the first race, you might want to put a wager on Ben De Silver in this race. And we both have a Pelle's Wonder somewhere on our ticket. Yeah, I think that's a horse that you just have to look at based on class alone. She's taken a pretty big drop today. Well, we're going to go to the third race, and this is a seven furlong maiden event. It's for three year olds and up. The claiming price is $25,000. We have a scratching here of number two, Case C. Weidman, and uh, hard not to have. Have the number three DNA approved, and there's that uh, trainer guy again, isn't it? Yes, another Stanley Gold horse, Kier. We're going to show you DNA approved last race. This is um, a $25,000 maiden claimer at six furlongs from August 10th. You're going to see the six DNA approved on the outside. Now watch here. He's getting, you know, hit left-handed and watch him drift out. He's not really getting that forward momentum going. I think if he would have, see, he gets straight here and then he starts to come back on again. I thought this was a really great effort. A little bit of greenness showed there, but once he gets that straight momentum, he's going. I think that was really just left-handed drifting out. And I think that he's going to be much better today. Yeah, and he looks like the logical choice in there. I went with the number four, Grease Paint, in second. This one's going to cut back to this uh, seven furlong distance on the dirt. He's going to wear blinkers today after finishing a four wide fourth, uh, beating two and a uh, quarter, three quarter lengths at even that race. It was a uh, $16,000 types on the grass. I just thought, uh, you know, turning back, I'm always a sucker, speed on the grass, turning back to seven eighths on the main track. So I put the number four, Grease Paint, somewhere on my ticket. You went with the number seven, Little. Baker in third. Uh, second, I, excuse me. I have Little Baker in second, third here on my piece of paper, but uh, apparently I have him second here on, <laughs> on the TV screen, but that's okay because I do like this three year old gelding. You know, on paper, he has yet to hit the board in five lifetime starts, but that was at the maiden special weight level. I really think the class relief should give him an edge, as should the addition of bleaker, blinkers and the assistance of leading rider Edgar Zayas. Well, let's go to the fourth race. And the fourth race is six furlong maiden claim is Phillies two year olds. The claiming price $50,000. And we want to go back and show you a video from August 29th uh, about the number three horse in that race, Wildcat Magic, who's now the one in this race. Yes, I love this race by Wildcat Magic. If you watch here, breaks a little bit slow on the rail and is really just unhurried. You know, let, goes at her own pace. She's really, you know, gets a little bit behind. I just love the move that she ends up making in this race. She closes from 11 and a half lengths back to move up to second. Look at how far she is back right now in the stretch. She is going to make up that ground. She is actually going to come all the way back and snag the second position from 11 and a half lengths back in just in that final furlong. Obviously not going to catch the winner that day, but I was still very impressed. And trainer Bill Kaplan, he is known for not rushing his two-year-olds and forcing them in their first starts. They're allowed to develop and really go with their own pace. So that was just the pure talent that she showed. And I think she's going to be even more improved today in her position. Well, it's hard not to talk about Stanley Gold when it comes to two-year-olds at Gulfstream this summer, but certainly Bill Kaplan doing a fantastic job with all his two-year-olds, and uh, he's been right there uh, with everything. Yeah, well, Moment of Delight was second, you saw, by that nose last <laughs> week in the Susan's Girl. And on that same day, he had two two-year-olds go up to Louisiana because they weren't eligible for the Sire Stakes. And um, both of them, Naval Command 
as well as my point exactly, both won stakes up at Louisiana. He almost had a three-stake win day with all two-year-olds. Yeah, and I, I thought he was going to win. I mean, you saw the, the photo there, the nose uh, beat in there. What a day that would have been, uh, three two-year-olds winning from here to Louisiana. But the second by a nose is not bad. Like I said, he's got the uh, finale. Maybe that horse will close and get the job done. That'll be on October 4th, one mile and one sixteenth. I used the two, as you did, uh, Pizzi's prize. This one making her South Florida debut after recovering from a, a slow start to finish uh, second. It was a $40,000 career debut. It was up at Monmouth Park. Trainer Marcus Vitale, along with his go-to rider, Orlando Boca Chica. Another one I think you should look at is the four, Carolyn. She's making her debut for the David Fox Barn. The dam of Carolyn, Carolyn's Way, consistently produces winners. Four winners from five bulls to start. And owner breeder, breeder Harold Queen must have really liked what he saw from the mating of Carolyn's Way and Burning Roma because this is the second time that they've been bred together. So uh, Carolyn has six published works leading up to this debut. Fox won with another debut in a mating claimer last week in Lines of Nazca. I think you keep an eye on Carolyn today. Well, not adding in yesterday where he had to win David Fox because I was doing some stats. In the last eight races before yesterday, he had won five. So he was 63% win average. He won one yesterday. I think it's up to like six and nine or ten now, which is still fantastic. So the bond has been just on fire. We're going to go to the fifth race and go back to, I know my favorite surface, and that's the turf. And this one, one mile and 116. Claim is three year olds and up $12,500. One scratch in the rate of race of number eight, P.O.'s Passion. Uh, we both went with the four dynamic boy and not only is dynamic boy my top pick this is my best bet of the afternoon I picked one and this one is taking another drop on the claiming scale returned from a seven week fraction fresh and finished second beaten ahead that was against sixteen thousand dollar claimers going a mile I don't know how you cannot put dynamic boy on top in this race prior to his last start he ran second to hey Leroy back in June that says a lot and the last time he ran for this 12-5 tag he won and I expect him to do the same again today uh, Jupiter will try and make it two in a row, and that's the 10 horse after, I thought, a visually pleasing score in which he circled the field. He got up the win by a neck at this level of distance. I just thought that was a huge performance last time out. Yeah, and that was a neck victory over Sky Blue Pink, who is also in this field, and I believe you have on your Yeah, I have on a ticket. I do offer that, and I said, you know, just because he figures uh, off that performance, if you like Jupiter, I sort of put the number five Sky Blue Pink on. I think the one also, Willie Pay, is one that you have to put on your ticket, especially if this horse can get loose and relaxed on the lead. I think if that happens, he's virtually unbeatable at this level. Yeah, and uh, always good to go a little deeper there, but uh, here's where you really got to start scratching your head, because this is where the Rainbow Six starts. Race number Six last six races on the card, and we're going to start it off with a six furlong claimer. Phillies and Mayors three and up, non winners of two races in life, $6,250. One equipment note no, number nine, hearsay social, will race with blinkers on today. So, blinkers on number nine, hearsay social, and I went with the number two, Rolex A. Again, another. We're, we're seeing double today, guys. Well, you tell Listen them about it. You we're copy me. Right. <laughs> you gotta like Rollick Gal in this race. This three year old filly has been pretty lightly raced. She won at first asking and was one horse away from winning an open company last time out in her third career start. That was behind Ya Esta, who's actually running later on in the card. So if Rollick Gal runs well, you better bet on Ya Esta later on in the card. She was an eight and three quarter length victor that day. Rollick Gal has yet to get a ground saving trip. She's been four or five wide in each of her three starts. With the two posts today, I think she'll be able to save a little bit of ground, and that's going to make the difference between first and second in here. Yeah, and I think you also, uh, on your Rainbow Six ticket, use the number 11, Benny First Baby. This one may have been, I thought, too far back in the early stages of the last race. She closed from nine lengths back to come within three quarters of a length of winning at this level of distance. Trainer Dave Vivian's got Abdel Hayen handling the outside post today. I just thought this horse, if it was a little closer early on, would have gotten the job done. Absolutely, and Ben First Baby really lacked running room in that race in the stretch. Once, once she had an opening, she really kicked through and continued to close. I don't think it's going to be an issue. And we both have the 10 Indy Silver Bullet uh, sitting on a winning performance, hit the board in three of our lo four local races at the $12,500 level. We're going to go to the seventh race, one mile, allowance, optional claimer, three-year-olds and up, $16,000, scratch the number five, Caminito, I'm not looking up, but I'm going to look, now. Hey, we're different. We are you, different. You we, start we now with the six. I really like Black Label. This three-year-old gelding is coming off a fourth-place effort in the Monarco Stakes two weeks ago, very well beaten by a 
Colt named Atreides, but everyone in that race was well beaten by Atreides yeah. that day. 17 and a half length victory in the Monarco Stake. But prior to that start, Black Label posted back-to-back -back wins and $30,000 claimers. One of those resulted in a disqualification. Didn't really. It was a controversial uh, switch, in, in my opinion. He was placed second after interfering with the opponent in the stretch. What I like about this horse is that he's really versatile. He's won on the lead, but he can also race. So Jockey Jesus Rios is going to be in a really advantageous position to be able to see how the speed shapes up and either take the lead or be able to rate. He's going to be able to make many adjustments according to how this race plays out, and obviously that's going to help him. I went with the number eight native goal beaten ahead as the favorite at this level and distance on the dirt. Now shifts back to the main track. Stalked the pace last time out uh, and faded. That was against a $16,000 starter allowance on the turf. Trainer Kirk Zadie, you know, you, you give it st st stats out for Kirk Zadie. They're always huge. This one, 39% with horses going from the grass to the main track. So hard not to have them on your ticket. Got black label on my ticket for all the reasons you mentioned. And how about the number seven dude man shortening up to a one turn mile? And this is the return of trainer Jane Sabelli to uh, South Florida and Gulfstream Park for the winter. She has some horse down. She was up at Monmouth Park and she always does a good job. Dude man really ran quite well here the last time he ran. He broke his mating at first asking here at Gulfstream during the champions meet and then he ran fourth in an allowance race. Take a look at the horses that finished in front of him. Anchor Down who was a very impressive winner that day actually unfortunately has not raced since then. I'd love to see him come back on the track. And Danza. Danza went on to win the Arkansas Derby and was third in the Kentucky Derby. So this horse has faced and been in some very good company and has done well. Well, the eighth race today, five furlong men, Philly, two-year-old, scratch the one, West Smith's the road, the two, look into my eyes, and number four, Mira Makura, and we have uh, still a big field in here, and I went with the number nine competitive play against the nod. I gave this one to nod on the previous experience angle. She turns back to five furlongs after dueling for lead, finishing fourth. It was a really solid group of maiden special weight runners going six and a half furlongs, so I'm going with the experience in here rather than one of the first-time starters, but uh, the 12 horse, Kurt Colonel Debt Will, I wanted to mention, race no LASIKs today. It says in your program, first time LASIKs will not race with LASIKs. You know, normally that's a strategy that I employ. I always go with experience, but I really like the breeding <laughs> and the works in some of the horses in this race. So I'm uncharacteristically going with all first time starters here in my top three. I put the five Legrats at the top of my ticket from the David Fox Barn. This is a daughter of Congrats and the Langford Mayor, La Illuminata. La Illuminata's foals have earned almost $600,000, and they all ran their best in dirt sprints. This filly is a half to a horse named Start Jumpin' Marnie, who is a multiple stakes winner and earner of more than $200,000. And also a horse, Uptown Charlie Brown, who was graded stakes placed and earned more than $125,000. La Illuminata consistently drops nice foals. And this filly here has six published works, including a bullet work back on August 24th. So it looks like she's coming in very nicely to her debut start. Well, let's get to the feature race today, because we got a couple of videos we want to show you. The mile in the 16th on the turf, three-year-old. This is the Vid. Vid, one of the greatest race horses around here. I love that horse. Trained by Marty Wilson. $90,000, as I mentioned. One mile and one sixteenth on the turf. And it's the return of Lochte. And Lochte, a grade one winner. And I believe that's the race we're going to show. We are going to show you. Why not? This is from the Champions Meet in the grade one Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap. You're going to see the one Lochte. He comes up the rail and he is going to run against some very nice horses and put in a very nice performance. He draws off to win by two and three quarter lengths. Look at that opening on the rail. Just go right through it. What a nice win. Now this horse came out of this race and he proved that it was no fluke that he belonged. He was second in the grade one Kilroy Mile. Shipped all the way over to, to California at Santa Anita. And then was third in the Makers 46 Mile Stakes. Another grade one behind a horse named Wise Dan two-time horse of the year. After that he kind of fell off his form a little bit but trainer Marcus Vitali is saying that he just did not like the surface at Monmouth but we know that he loves the surface here at Gulfstream. Three wins and a third from four starts here. I think he's going to show his old self today. Now we want to go back and we want to show you a race from uh, August 22nd of number seven, Grand Tito, who made a pretty nice move. I loved this race from Grand Tito, and that's why I think you have to put him on your ticket in this race. Watch Grand Tito. He did not break that great in this race. 
Then he's fanned out four wide going into the first turn, stalks three wide, then makes a four wide move into the stretch and just draws off, making look very easy. I was very impressed from this race. He's a grade three winner in his own right, and I think he is just in great form right now. I think he's going to put in a nice run. Well, uh, someone informed me this morning if you're a sheet player and you use either the Ragazin's uh, sheets or whatever, that this horse had the best last race, got a zero on the sheet. So, uh, certainly, uh, Grand Tito, a major player in here. With that said, did not put him on my top three. I used the number eight Lochte along with the defending champion here of the vid, and that's the two Heiko along with Dreams out short, cut short, excuse me. And that, of course, Mike Maker. And anytime Mike Maker has a turf horse running at Gulfstream Park, I'm going to pay attention. I really like Heiko as well that I have on my ticket. This horse suffered an ankle chip and was off for eight months. He made his first start back and ran a very nice second. I think he's going to be even more fit coming into this race. And like you said, he is the reigning champ. Did you notice our cameraman Dennis when they showed the Lochte race? Because he was bragging before we went on the air that he had it that day and made all sorts of money. He yeah, liked one of you, that. 39 yeah. to 1 odds that day. <laughs> he we was got laughing a great the whole cameraman. I was watching him the whole time we were showing the video and he had a big smile on his face. Our final race on Saturday's card six furlongs, claim is three and up, $6,250. By now, I hope you're alive in the Rainbow Six to pick five. If you're not, you got the super high five. And yeah, as we mentioned earlier, pay $200. $105,000 on Thursday. I went with Karate Jack, and I see you did too. I did. And last time out, this horse ran very, very well. That was a very close second. And I didn't like him that day because he was coming off a nice win, but just off seven days' rest. And he really proved me wrong. So now, with two weeks' rest, I got to go with him again. He's just in great form right now. And uh, I love the start two, two starts back when he drew off by four lengths. Well, that's not the last race. No. I forgot. It's Friday. It's 11 races. I'm thinking it's Friday. We have another race. We've got the 11th race. Now, all those things I told you about the super high five, this, that, this, it's in the 11th race. I'm thinking it's Friday, but it's Saturday. We always have 11 races on here. Five furlongs on the turf. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up $12,500. Scratch the six. Shot girl, the 13. La Hiela de Olga. And uh, sorry about that, but we do have 11 races today. So get your handicappings on. And here's that horse we mentioned earlier that I have on top. Number four, Ya Esta. Yeah, so this, the Super I-5 and all those carriers, they, they start in this race, but you know what? You should be preparing much earlier. <laughs> you needed to remind them. I like the two, little Daniela. I put her at the top of my ticket. This one's taking a considerable drop in class, class from the $25,000 level after finishing fourth. Beaten less than two lengths, though, at this distance on August 21st. She had some room at the top of the stretch, but just lacked some racing room that day. She angled out into the five path, then had to angle all the way back to the rail before she could get any running again. Once she got that momentum back, there was only about two strides before the wire. So I think with a better trip, you're going to see a better little Daniela today. And also, like you mentioned, Ya Esta. This one impressed at the 62.50 level on the main track last time out. That was an eight and three quarter length victory that we mentioned. It has only one start on the turf since last October, which was unplaced. But believe it or not, she's actually stakes place on the turf. So I don't think it's going to be an issue. Yeah, I, I like the one. I'm using the one on my tickets along with do we have our exact flip flop. Sylvia's a given age and moved to the Gustavo Delgado Bon Vita claim. Uh, turning back today to this five for a long distance. Duel for lead faded. It was against similar quality, but I love the work that the trainer Gustavo Delgado has been doing here. He's 33% with new claims. He's got Jose Valdivia Jr. in the saddle. Jose Valdivia Jr. won the last race yesterday with a horse that paid over $100. So I'm going to put this one somewhere on my uh, super high five ticket. A lot of good options that you can go with. Yeah, and that wraps up uh, 11 race card on Saturday. I was uh, sort of daydreaming on that last race. Yeah, don't leave us early. We got a great full card for you today. We got a good main track, good turf course once again. The Rainbow Six starts in race number six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Good luck. Good luck.